Hello everybody and welcome back to the Inner Sanctum YouTube channel. I'm your host Aris Demetakos and today we're back with another episode of Player Spotlight. Now for those who haven't seen this series before, basically this is where we go through some players who are on the periphery of the Socceroo squad, in or out of Graham Arnold's plans and just looking to where their hopes lie heading into the World Cup in November. As you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, this is episode 10 on Kai Rails, so let's get into it. So as we do on every episode of this series, let's take a look at who is Kai Rouse. Well, he's a 24-year-old left-sided, left-footed central defender, um, currently playing in Scotland for Hearts of Midlothian alongside fellow Australians Cam Devlin and Nathaniel Atkinson. Rouse began his professional career in uh, in Brisbane, playing for Brisbane Roy in 2016, playing five times at MPL level and twice at senior level. He then moved to the Central Coast Mariners in 2017, where he played 104 times over five seasons, became a real stalwart of that club, before, like I said, moving two hearts of middle Odin at the end of last season where he started five games from a potential six unfortunately getting injured in his latest one suffering a broken foot that is see that will see him on the sidelines for a couple of months um he has represented australia under 17 under 23 and under 20 level i should say um playing at under under 17 level he played 15 times including the 2015 fifa under-17 World Cup, as well as playing four times for the under-20s and five times for the under-23s. He's represented the Socceroos at senior level three times, making his debut um, against Jordan earlier on this year, as well as playing both games for, but playing both games against the UAE and Peru. So yeah, that is who Kyle Rousey is. We've, we've just mentioned before that he's a left-footed, left-sided central defender, but let's take a dissection about who, what he actually offers on the pitch and a little bit of his player profile. So as we always do on this series, let's take a look at Kyle Rouse's player profile. Now, as mentioned at the top of the show, he's a left-footed, left-sided central defender, meaning he doesn't really have a lot of competition both at club or international level, or like what I mean by that is some direct competition. I feel like as the modern modern game is is going is progressing, and as teams are starting to implement a little bit of three at the back formations and wanting to have more natural players play on the left side, natural left-footers play on the left side, he doesn't really have a lot of direct competition just because of how scarce left-footed and left-sided central defenders are. So being a left-footed, natural left-footed, natural left-sided central defender gives him a little bit more uh, valuability. He's a little bit more of a valuable commodity um, for both in at both international and club level. Um, his heart side that he plays for, Hearts and Middle, his, his side in Scotland, sorry, Hearts and Middle Lothian, uh, very fluid. They they do try to kind of transition between a back three and a back four at times. And this is really good for his tactical fluidity and, and kind of positional versatility in a sense. He has shown that he can play both as a natural left-sided central defender in a back four as well as playing as an outside central defender in a back three and this just gives him a, a, a lot more options in what systems he can play and allows him to adapt really well to whatever type of football um, his gaffer at the time is, is wanting to play now as we see from the heat map, we can see that Kyle Rouse is very comfortable um, in both a back three and a back four, as his heat map suggests. He does like to um, go out wide when playing in a back three, but can also play a little bit more centrally in a back four. Like once again, that tactical fluidity is very good and is very valuable. And he also does like to push up a little bit, kind of play on the halfway line and allow himself to allow himself to get involved in the game at times. He isn't the best ball playing center back in the world. That's pretty that's not what his modus operandi in a sense. He's a lot more of a natural defensive minded defend like central defender. He doesn't really like to express himself. He doesn't like to carry the ball forward despite playing as an outside centre back. He is more traditional in a sense. But if we can if we can look past that despite him playing like that, he isn't he's a lot more of a natural natural defender in a sense he's very aggressive likes to get stuck in especially um in in tackles and in ground duels he's a very aggressive defender very and a, a, a a defender that um, revolves around anticipation and looking to just get the ball away as much as possible and try, kind of repelling danger as much as possible. He isn't really modern in a sense. He does like to, he's more of a complement to a more flashy, more languid centre half. He is more of your industrious, systematic type centre back. And that works for the Socceroos because you have a lot of um, young players, young centre backs coming through the system who he can complement very well. As well as in this heart side, we've seen him complement a, a number of centre halves very well. Some of the stats this season that have stood out um, for Kyle Rouse, I know he only has he only has played four, four full games, four full nineties. He did get injured in his most recent game, like I said at the top of the show, suffering a broken foot. But if we look at um, his stats per ninety, I think that's a pretty good way of of, of 
looking at this, he has 5.7 clearances per 90 in his four, um, in his four and a half games, if you were to call it that. Now that is ridiculous. They're they're ridiculous. That's a ridiculous defensive stat, and just goes to show how much of a kind of no nonsense centre back he is. He just wants to get the ball out as much as possible and really just repel danger um, at all costs. Some other stats that are pretty good that kind of show how how industrious he is is that he's a 66.67 ground jewels one percentage as well as a 60 percent aerials one percentage aerial jewels one percentage so once again just very industrious very reliable no, nothing flashy just kind of gets the job done he's only been dribbled past 0.68 times per 90 this season so that's being dribbled past under under once a game which is very good as well as having 27.57 accurate um own accurate passes in his own half which just shows that he's while he's not flashy while he's not going to pick up the ball and play 30 mate 30 yard passes and really be that first line of attack he is comfortable on the ball can recycle possession and just do the simple stuff well which i think has um elevated his game from playing in the a league to playing in scotland and playing in, in one of the um premier sides in scotland being that more comfortable on the ball doesn't need to be flashy and he isn't but he's just comfortable on the, on the ball so yeah that's kyle rouse's player profile as we always do on this series let's look at his socceroos career to date and in particular the those two games against Peru and the UAE. So as mentioned at the top of the show, he has made three appearances for the Socceroos, making his debut against Jordan in a friendly earlier this year. But I feel like the best place to look at um, Kai Rouse's Socceroos career to date is his two games against the UAE and Peru. Now, he was thrusted into the limelight pretty unexpectedly so, in a sense, with Trent Sainsbury going down with an injury and wasn't available to play. He played both games, played all of the minutes in both games, including the extra time against Peru, and really showed his class. So let's just go through the game against the UAE first. While this, I think this wasn't really a memorable game. If if the circumstances weren't as they were, I'm not really sure a lot of Socceroos fans would remember would remember this game. And this kind of shows through Kyle Rouse's kind of statistics. He didn't really have anything flashy. He had one interception, had one blocked shot, and just had a had 95% pass completion rate. Nothing special. Nothing special. Nothing flashy. Um, and it wasn't a great game per se. But I didn't think he needed to have a great game. He just did his job. He shut out um, the UAE striker. He didn't really have an influence in the game and he, he created a good partnership with him and Bailey Wright however what we saw in the game against Peru was something a little bit different in that game against Peru we had seven clearances which backs up his, his um five point his 5.7 um clearances per 90 stat this season that just shows that he's very good at clearing the ball he's very no nonsense in that aspect had one interception had a 93 percent pass completion rate had four from one three from four ground jewels and one two from four aerial jewels and only lost possession six times now this just shows that in that game in a high pressure scenario he was really clutch and was really able to show just how good he was in the big moments and this kind of gives a little bit more of, of com- gives a little bit of comfortability for soccer his fans and the staff as well that he can perform in high pressure scenarios and then he can perform when the chips are down and when Australia really need a good performance from a, from a centre half and a kind of solid and reliable performance from a centre half, he is able to show that in both those games the pressure was high and he didn't really make a notable mistake which um, really should be the, the bare minimum for a professional footballer but when he's thrusted right into the deep end in his second professional um, soccer, his second professional international game um, at senior level, being thrusted into a do or die game against the UAE and then a do or die game against Peru it was a real litmus test in terms of is he up to the standard and I think he showed that he's up to the standard and some he was fantastic in both of those games however let's look at where his future lies because he was only playing in that game because of the Trent Sainsbury injury and of course Harry Suter not being available does kind of put his availability or his um, his willingness to start or his availability to start, if you were to call it that, in jeopardy. But let's take a look at his Socceroos um, future a little bit more in depth right now. Now, it's really interesting when looking at Kyle Rouse's Socceroos future, if you were to call it that, because we assume that if Trent Sainsbury and Harry Suter were both fit, that they will both start. That um, kind of puts him maybe third in line or maybe fourth in line behind Bailey Wright or even Milos Degenek. Now, you would be safe to assume that he will be in the squad come come Qatar and come future tournaments because Trent Sainsbury's career is in its twilight. Harry Suter is going to be the number one and a half for, for the next decade, it looks to be. And it's 
kind of a little bit in limbo where if he starts, if he's going to be second choice or even third choice um, behind the two, the behind the starting two centre halves. Or if Graham Arnold decides to move to a back three, I feel like he could fit perfectly as that left sided centre half, natural left footed, played there before, has all the boxes to tick, or has or ticks all the boxes to play in that position for the Socceroos. Now, as I said, he's currently suffering from a broken foot, so he'll be in a little bit of a race against time to be fit for Qatar. Um, he will not, he won't be available for the two friendlies against New Zealand which puts his spot a little bit in jeopardy because it gives the likes of Dagonek, of Stesnes to really prove themselves and kind of leapfrog him in the pecking order in a sense. But I do think that he will be in the squad. He's still young, so that experience will definitely be something that Graham Idle wants to give him. He's left-footed as well, so that just, again, provides a different option. He's naturally left-footed, naturally left-sided. So just on the virtue of that fact, he does kind of outplay a player that's kind of similar in level to him because he offers that that um, difference in a sense. But yeah, he will be alongside the likes of Degenek, Bailey Wright, and Yanni Stesnes heading into the squad. No doubt he'll make the 40 or the extended squad. That's almost a lock. And it is very, very um, safe to assume that he'll make the 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 squad that goes to Qatar in the end. But whether or not he gets minutes in Qatar is a different story. I feel like the experience is just valuable enough for him. He's currently 24. He'll be 28 by the time the World Cup rolls around um, in four years' time. And that that four years playing at Scotland and maybe even a, a level above that will give him so much experience as well as having this World Cup campaign to look back on. So yeah, while this isn't the be-all and end-all if Kyle Rouse doesn't feature heavily in the Socceroo system in the next year, maybe two years, the foundations that he's laid so far and the foundations that he'll lay at the World Cup and playing for Hearts in, in Scotland will put him in good stead come four years' time and even four years after that when he'll be a, a mature head around the squad, no doubt. But yeah, that's where Kyle Rouse's future lies in the soccer shirt. So yes, thank you all very much for watching another episode of Player Spotlight. This was episode 10 on Kyle Rouse. Thank you all very much for the support on all the recent episodes. It means the world to me and everyone here at the In The Sanctum. Make sure you like the, like the video, subscribe to the In Sanctum YouTube channel. Comment below your thoughts on who you want um, given Player Spotlight's next. And leave your thoughts on Kyle Rouse's um, future and, and his career to date and the way that he plays football in the comment section below. Thank you all very much for watching. See you guys next time and goodbye.